Seven Lamb Productions presents Chair of Swords. Episode One War is Coming. This is a tale of chivalry, deception, war, vigor. Yes, I said vigor, affairs, turmoil, and a bit of laughter. This tale is much like that of the Game of Thrones minus the TNA because this is a podcast and you can't hear tits. This tale begins in the dark woods, an area that is not often traversed. That is, unless it is to speak to the mystical three. Three witches house themselves in the darkest corner, hiding among the bramble and thorn. Not many make their way through the thickets, but some, some who wish to know the future just might. And this is where we begin. King Leotard is lying on his deathbed. Night Night, that's Night, K-N-I-G-H-T, Night, N-I-G-H-T. Not the greatest of names, I shall admit. But Night Night makes his way to the witch's hut find out exactly what the future holds. Easy, Petunia, easy. It's okay. We'll be rid of these woods soon enough. (coughs) Whoa there, Petunia. We have arrived. There. There's the witch's hut. Stay hither, Petunia. Now, Night Knight was a very brave fellow. That's how he became a knight with a K. Became a knight with an N because his father Ares, Lord of Breckenridge, had bet his mother Queen Sweet Tea in a manner that was sure to have impregnated her. They went at it for hours and hours. Uh, Lord Ares' knight always wanted a son, and when young knight was born, it was Ares' wish that he become a master with the sword. Now Knight Knight lives in Ravenfall, home to King Leotard, but King Leotard has fallen ill, and Knight Knight has been sent to the dark woods for an answer to the king's fate. Witches, I command you, show yourselves. And who so commands us? A weak warrior? I am not weak. I once wrestled a bear and made him beg for mercy. Did he actually beg? I hurt him so much he was forced to learn the king's language, just to say, please stop. I wouldn't let him tap out. Ah, so a strong warrior is present. This is the case. What does he want from the witches of the woods? First, he commands you to show yourselves. So be it. Carthalis was the eldest witch. She was grotesque, born from a man with leprosy and an actual pig. Carthalis had a squashed nose, warts down her body, and smelled like complete shit. It is I, Carthalis, one of the witches three. And where are your witch sisters? Behind you. Back, back, I say. This warrior is frightened. Nay, I am careful. Worried about little old Vaisavik. 
Vesovic, the middle sister, was equally as ugly as Carthalis. She had thin, gray, mangled hair, a large hooked nose, and burned skin down the right side of her body. She, too, were born from a leper and pig. No witches scare me. If that were the case, I would not have traversed such a land to reach these woods. But I may ask, where is the third? Hello! This was Jane. She was the third and youngest sister. <laughs> Jane was hot. Didn't make much sense, but she was. Hi, I'm Jane. I must say, you are the fairest of the bunch. She is not. She cheats at cards. Only that one time. I meant fairest looking. What is it that brings this warrior to us? I have come looking for an answer. To what question? King Leotard has taken ill. I have been sent to find what his future holds. Will the king rise again? Ah, the warrior comes from Ravenfall. I do. What do the witches three gain from providing such an answer? What do the witches desire? I have brought coin. Ugh, the witches do not desire your coin. What do the three gain from riches in the woods? You would be hardly rich. I've come with merely ten dollars. Your coin is not needed. Then what? Yes, yes. What do we desire? I have an idea. Shh, Jane. Let the eldest decide. Yes, yes. Let Carthalis choose, for Carthalis has chosen. And for what has Carthalis chosen? It has been quite a time since the witches have bed a man. Uh, is that so? It is. You may have your answer, warrior, if you so desire, as long as you provide the three with their desire. The witches three desire the touch of a man. But I have brungeth ten dollars. What about the ten dollars? No need for your coin. I, uh, uh, do not have it in me to bet all three. But you will bet one. Fine. Who shall you choose? Uh, Jane. I, I, I'll choose Jane. I, I'll fuck Jane. Jane's the one I choose. And what do Carthalis and Vizovic get from such an arrangement? Not sure I really care. We must partake in some way, warrior. May we watch and pleasure ourselves? This may make the knight's manhood soft. No, for sure would make my manhood soft. What if we do it from further away? As long as I may not see nor hear thee. For it is certain. I very much hope so. So night night fucked Jane and the sisters watched from behind a far rock while pleasuring themselves. After they finished, the witches invited night night into their hut where they gathered around a glowing purple orb. Dark soul, dark soul, appear! Yes, dark soul, grace us with your presence. The Dark Soul has arrived. Dark Soul. A warrior is here. He begs to know what is to come of King Leotard. Yes? Yes. What does the orb say, which King Leotard will succeed? He is on his deathbed, warrior. He's got, like, maybe two days, tops. This cannot be! 
But it is. King Leotard will fall. And what of Nymeria? Nymeria will see war. For those of you who do not know, which is all of you because this is brand new information, King Leotard may live in Ravenfall, but he is not king of only Ravenfall. King Leotard is king of all Nymeria. The mountains in the north, the seas to the west, the grasslands to the east, and tundra to the south. All of Nymeria was gained when King Leotard took down Garanith, the hunter of dragons. Many have tried to usurp the king. None have succeeded. None will need to usurp the king now, for he will fall and many will come to gain the throne. You mean the chair? The Chair of Swords. The Chair of Swords was fashioned many a year ago from all of thy enemies of Goranith. It was built so that Goranith could sit on the weapons that were taken from his fallen enemies as if to say, Take that. I'm better than you. Who then? Who will win the Chair of Swords? Many will fight for it. Lord Ferris of the Coal Islands, King Julian, from the Field of Dreams, the Hunter of the Wall, King Phillips from Summer Rise. Even King Phillips? But he is a dunce. All will fight for the Chair of Swords. War is coming. Prepare yourself, warrior. Night Knight was frightened by such news. Quickly ran from the hut, climbed aboard his steed, and headed straight toward Ravenfall. <laughs> Night Knight rode across the land as fast as his steed would take him. He made it to the Ravenfall just as the sun was setting over Mammoth Mountains. We have arrived, Petunia. You have done well, Steed. I shall reward you with hay and oats as soon as the council gets this horrible news. <laughs> I have made it back from the dark woods. Wait, wait, wait. You cannot enter the council at this time. Big Thumb. They wanted word. Yes, but they are in session. You must wait. Big Thumb was a nickname given to Oro's Tide. A big man with big hands, but bigger thumbs. Big Thumb was master of coin. Many thought the mischievous fat man to be quite cheap, and he was often caught messing with Ravenfall's funds. Although the council seemed to know many misdeeds were going on, they let Big Thumb keep his job, which may be due to the fact that Big Thumb was known to be cunning and often talked himself out of such trouble. He was so cunning he once stole a horse, Killed the horse, ate the horse, shit out enough shit to sculpt the horse, then sold the manure horse to the person he initially stole the real horse from. He claimed it was a real horse, and while everyone knew it was a pile of shit, literally, he was still able to make a couple hundred bucks. Big Thumb, I must enter. Patience, lad. Word must be spoken. In due time, this is not easy on anyone. Regardless of your news, be it good or bad, or maybe... Fifty-fifty. Although someone either dies or they don't, so the odds of it being split is quite improbable. What are you going on about? Sorry, just ranting. I will fetch you when council has finished. Night Night was frustrated. News of King Leotard was urgent. How could he stand by and wait? He couldn't. Instead, Night Night made his way to the castle, to the king's chambers.
Knights, you have returned. Queen Arietta was elegant, but at times frightening. She had a cold interior, but often hid it under a radiant glow. Her daughter, Princess Espota, was much like her, but younger and not as cold. Queen Arietta, Princess Espota, and the king's aide, Jorgis Hind, sat around the king's bed, the king lie unmoving. Have you brought word? I have brought enough to make an entire sentence. The witches have told me the king's fate. But before we get to that, how is he? How is he? He has a sword in his eye. He doesn't have much more time. It's what I've been telling everyone. I don't know why the council sent you to the Darkwoods for an answer I have been giving since he first took the sword to the eye. But I know of his fate. So do I. He has a sword that has gone through his head. He will die. I am most certain. Can you not see, knight, queen, princess? He has a sword in his face. It sticks out the back of his head. So will father rise again? No, no. It is as I have said. He will die. But you are only a lowly aide. I have practiced medicine. But what does your medicine training tell you of swords in people's heads? It tells me that they die. That's what medicine training tells you? That's what common sense tells me. It is not often that one can sustain an injury such as a sword going through one's head, and yet rise and prance about days later. My father does not prance. And nor will he ever, for he shall perish. The witches have given the king just two days. I give him twenty minutes. The fact that he is still alive is quite astonishing, but he will not last much longer. But father is strong. That may be so, but he still has a sword through his head, so... You mock him. I do not. King Leotard is a brave man who has fallen like a hero. He slipped on a banana peel and fell on his own sword. A common occurrence. Never happened before. Even a jester has not performed such buffoonery. Enough. I will not hear you talk ill of a man lying on his deathbed. And not just any man, but the king of Nymeria. I understand, Queen Arietta. I shall halt my words. It was at this moment the room fell silent. Night-night looked over to Princess Espoto with her rosy cheeks and busty bosom, an ass that wouldn't quit if you wanted to take away its benefits, including dental. Her sandy robe glided across the floor, and she made her way to her father's bedside. She held his hand, but did not take her eyes off the handsome knight. Even if the king's aide believes travel to the dark woods were unnecessary, thank you for making such a long and treacherous trip. Of course, anything for the king. Princess Espota smiled ever so slightly, and Night Knight returned her cute gesture with a thrust of his crotchal region. Hind and Queen Arietta may not have noticed, but the air was thick with love between the princess and Knight. Sadly, their love could never be, for she was royalty, and he was but a piece of shit, as the king once put it. Knight! Yes, Big Thumb. The council will see you. Knight entered the large council room and stood in front of the Council of Eight. The speaker, an elderly man named Anton Kilso, stood and addressed Sir Knight. So, Knight Knight, what word do you bring for the Dark Woods? Good news and bad? If that is the case, we shall receive the good news first! No, I am sorry. But I only come with bad news. We would be pleased if Sir Knight would present us with the good news first. I have none. Make something up! Oh, of course, if it would please the council. It would. The good news that I present to the council is... Is, um... My blister that I had on my big toe, it has finally disappeared. And what has happened to said blister? 
I do not know. It has just gone away. Ah, that is good news! We here at the Council are very pleased with your recovery. Now for the bad news. Ah, yes. I met with the witches. Although apparently the king's aide, Jorgas Hind, also knows the king's fate. Which is? The king will fall. Is that so? I am afraid it is. How long do we have? The witches say no more than two days. Hen says about twenty minutes. Well, then we are surely fucked. Kill so, if the king can maybe last a day or two. He is dead. The king is dead. <laughs> Jorgis Hind appeared in the doorway of the council. He walked up to stand next to Night Knight. The king has been pronounced dead. Are you for certain? It cannot be. Of course it can. He had a sword in his face. I have been telling you he shall not live. Yet you sent Night Knight on a day's ride to the dark woods to meet with two ugly witches and one pretty one. I should be more upset, but I did get to fuck the pretty one. Quite lucky you are. Do you know what this means? Anton Kilso rubbed his temple and slid into his seat. His knees were weak, his hands shaky. Do you know what this means? Queen Arietta will be in power. The royal army will cede. Everyone will fight to claim the chair of swords. War will claim Nymeria. Death! I foresee so much death! What shall the council do? What can we do? Wait to see who will claim the Chair of Swords. Chair of Swords, written by Robert M. Lamb. Edited by Robert M. Lamb, Amber Simpson, and Adam Jetmore. Starring Nick Engelhardt, Amy Luray, Jack Austin, Brian Messi, Ashley Cartesano, Amber Simpson, Robert M. Lamb, Alicia T., Brett Wilkins, Jose Caraballo, Jay Moron, Kaylin Boyd, Mike Lenhart, April Cadmus Marsh. Victor M. Ryan Groschi. Seth York. Ryan Wiggs. John Lazabeth. Chris Cartizano. Caitlin Kaur. Ashley York. And Arlene Toro. Music provided by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com and SoundSnap.com. Visit www.7lamb.com or www.blogtalkradio.com slash 7lamb for more fictional podcasts. And don't forget to rate and review on iTunes. has been a Seven Lamb production.